Now let's talk about something else. Let's talk about Mithridates and why you should care about Mithridates VI of Pontus. Now, when you look at the title of this little mini lecture, you're probably thinking a couple of things. One, what's Mithridates? And two, what's Pontus? Let's chat. Mithridates VI is a king of a place called Pontus. Right. Where is Pontus? Pontus is the dark purple part of this map. And so it's northern part of what is now Turkey going into Armenia on the Black Sea. What else is it? It's a kind of a leftover of the conquests of Alexander. It's a place that his, uh, his army kind of skirted on its way out into Persia. The thing about Mithridates is his, his kingdom uh, sort of was somewhere between east and west. A lot of his inhabitants were Greek. A lot of his inhabitants had more to do with the Persians who lived in this part of the world. So his name reflects that in a way. Um, his full title is Mithridates, which means gift of Mithra in Persian. The sixth, Eupator, good father, Dionysus, right? which is definitely a Greek kind of name. So let's talk about him. He lived from 135 to 63 BCE, nice long life. He claimed descent from Macedonian kings such as Seleucus and Tigonus on one side, and King Cyrus of Persia on the other. And he ruled as both an, a Hellenistic king who was in support of things like democracy and an Eastern-style despot at the same time. So he wore uh, the tiara of a Hellenistic king as well as the trousers of a Persian king. He had a number of beautiful and fascinating wives. And this is the interesting thing about him. He has wives from all over the place at the same time, in some cases. One of them was his sister, believe it or not. She didn't last very long. And the last of his wives was actually rumored to be an Amazon. He spoke over 20 languages, and he was fabulously wealthy. And that's kind of the gossip, or a little bit about him. But why should you care about Mithridates of Pontus? You can see that his life roughly overlaps that of Caesar's. He was a little older than Caesar, um, but... He and Caesar actually indirectly fought at some point in time. But here's why you should care about him. He confronted some of the greatest Roman generals of all time. Lucullus, Sulla, Caesar, a young Caesar, and Pompey the Great. He was thought to pose an existential threat to Rome. That is, not unlike Hannibal, and he was often compared to Hannibal. It was believed that he would strike at the heart of Rome and snuff out the Roman Empire. His wars with Rome caused the Romans to extend their presence into the Middle East and into Anatolia permanently. So the Romans would never leave that part of the world until they were kicked out uh, by Islamic invaders in the 6th and 700s CE. Right, so this is for hundreds of years, this will have an impact on this region. He actually enjoyed immunity to poison, as he took sub-lethal doses of many poisons every single morning. Mithridate is actually an English word, thanks to him, and this word means uh, universal antidote to poisons. And that's a little bit of a gossip too, but it is something to think about when you think of a person like him. This last part ties into the second thing. The Romans believed he was an existential threat to them. And why did they have such fear of him? Did he ever launch a full-scale invasion of Italy? No. He did, however, ally himself with such rebels as Spartacus, and the Roman army that was allied with the Ita Italian Socii that was still rebelling out in Spain in the 70s. Okay, so he is allied with Roman enemies who posed a real threat to Rome. There's that. But here's the thing that really scared the Romans about him. In 88 BCE, Mithridates does this. He arranges for the murder of every single Roman citizen living in Roman provinces in Asia Minor. So that's all along this part. There were a lot of Roman citizens living here. Mithridates arranges for the death of over 80,000 people over the course of just a few days. And what I'll describe as an act of terror. And here's why it's an act of terror. We could roughly define terrorism, or an act of terrorism, is one that is a violent act against people who were non-combatants in order to make the people who govern those non-combatants adjust their policies. Okay, Mithridates kills all these innocent citizens in Asia Minor to make the Romans go away. He doesn't fight a war 
as per se, against the Romans until the Romans bring war to him. Instead, he is Roman, innocent Roman citizens murdered. So, he's a terrorist. And he uses terrorism in a very deadly way to get what he wants. Stay tuned for my next lecture on Augustus and the beginning of the Principate.